Okay, now that that first video is out of the way, we're back and we're ready to deal with the practical side of particle systems. And that practical side that we're going to start with is an ArrayList. What is an ArrayList? Well, before we even get to an, what is an ArrayList, let's talk about why we might want an ArrayList. Okay, so you have a particle object. Now, you want to have many particle objects. Your first thing you're going to do is say, aha, I uh, used to declare a variable particle p, now I'm going to declare an array of particles. So I'm going to say, I'm going to come over here, where I don't really have any room to stand, but I'm going to say, ah, particle brackets, uh, particles equals new particle 100, semicolon, right? What have we written out here? This is an array declaration. We have a type particle, the brackets indicate it's going to be an array, our name is particles, and then we have 100 elements, 100 particles in that array. This is what we're used to, then we can loop through that array, and we can draw all them, and update them, and do all sorts of things. Great. The issue is, what if we want to start with zero particles, and then add one, then add one, then add one, then delete them, and delete one? We could kind of do that with an array. We could have a variable to keep track of what part of the array are we using. Oh, let's use this section. We could reuse elements. There's also even in processing, if you look through the processing uh, documentation, there's append, contract. There's a bunch of functions that seem to like add and subtract stuff from the array, and the, the syntax is kind of weird, and it's confusing, and then they, you know, it's just not a, it's not a place we want to go to right now. The place we want to go to is using an ArrayList. An ArrayList is going to allow us to have this essentially this like empty bucket. This empty bucket where we can put particles in, we can take particles out, we can manage our system of objects. It's going to be great. So how do we know, how do we learn about what an ArrayList is? Okay, so there's a couple places that we could go to, just, just that, that I think I should mention before we start kind of mapping out the parts of what an array list is that we need to know. So number one is processing. Okay, so an array list is not really something that is part of processing. An array list is a class that's part of Java, but it's so commonly used that, it's, that, that you will find it documented on the processing website. So you will find a, a documentation page with a little bit of an example, and it says in the description, an array list stores a variable number of objects. And this is great. So we could find out some initial information here, and you could see, ah, there's a size method, an add method, a get, a remove. And in fact, those are the methods that we're going to want. So for the kind of easygoing introduction to the concept of an array list, this processing reference page is going to be perfect for us. However, um, it, I should note that where it really comes from is from Java. So there is this kind of balloon giant, like read all this stuff about what an array list is. This is the Java reference page. And you can see, look at all of these methods. Add, at all, clone, ensure capacity, get, is empty, eh, remove, remove range. So there's a huge amount of things that an array list can do. But what we want to look at is this kind of subset of that. We're going to start by looking at just a small list of methods in an array list. Um, so you know what, I'm just, forget about it. We don't even need this anymore. We want to make sure we are comfortable with this idea of adding to an array list. We want to sometimes get things out of an array list. Sometimes we want to remove things from an array list. And sometimes we need to know the size of the array list. So this can kind of be our list of methods that we're going to need to feel comfortable with in order to program this particle system simulation with an ArrayList. <laughs> Hooray. OK. <sighs> low energy day, low energy day. OK. Um, don't fall asleep. Wake up. <laughs> OK. Uh, all right. So how do we even start? OK, how do we even start? Let's say we, we're assuming the existence of a class called particle. So this class called particle, we assume exists. So we're going to make an array list with particle objects in it. Now there's some funny bit of syntax here that's, I want to say new, but I think it's years old at this point. It just, it feels new because when I first started working with array list, it didn't exist. But when we declare an array list, I'm going to declare an array list over here. I'm going to say, hey, I'm going to have an array list and I'm going to call it particles. OK, so here's the thing about this declaration. One of the things about ArrayList is they are, it's a general purpose bucket that you can put any kind of objects you want to in. I could put some particles in, and some movers in, and some p fonts in, a couple p images, and I could just start putting objects in there. But this is not typically how you use an ArrayList. 
typically use an array list to collect a bunch of the same kinds of objects. And in our case, this is exactly what we're going to do. We know that this array list that we're about to make, we're only ever going to put particle objects in it. So we can specify in advance, at the moment that we're going to create this array list called particles, that it's our intention to put particle objects in it. This is called generics. The syntax is called generics. And the way that we do that, I'm like standing in the strangest way ever, is by use of the less than and greater than signs, and we put, we put the type in, bet in, in, in between those signs. So we're saying, I'm going to have an array list. It's going to be full of particle objects, and we're going to call it particles. Now, <laughs> just for the purpose of this demonstration, A, it's going to allow me to write less things on the board, but also to emphasize Remember, this is your variable name. It can be anything you want. And often it is confusing. I have an array list with particle objects. I'm calling it particles, and I get a particle. What's what? So we're going to have an array list of, with particle objects in it. I'm going to call it just A. So we're not done. Any time that you have a variable, right? Any time that you have an object, you need to declare the object, and you need to initialize that object. You initialize an array list by calling the constructor. Just like you say particle p equals new particle, we're now going to say array list a equals new array list. And I could do that in one line of code, but just to demonstrate here on the board, I'm going to say a equals new array list. And this is another moment where I need to specify what goes in it. A is a new array list with particle objects in it. So this is all we need. This is the beginnings of what we need. We need to declare a variable of type array list, say what we're going to put in the array list, and then we need to call the constructor to have this empty bucket. Now that we have this empty bucket, we are golden. <laughs> we can start using add, get, remove, size. We can do all of these things. And one of the first things we might do is just say, hey, Let's add a new particle object into our array list. We can do this at any point. We could do this when we click the mouse. We could do it in setup. We could do it over and over again in draw. We can add particles to that array list. Whew. And OK, so boy, there's a lot of stuff here. And we've been seven minutes. This is going to be, uh, everything's fine. I um, need to edit this part out. OK, I'm just trying to map out in my brain where we're going with this. OK, where are we? we well, let's go over to our example for a second. OK, so here we are, and we have our uh, particle example before with a single particle. Now what we want to do is add an array list to this example so that we could eventually have multiple particles. So instead of the single particle variable at the top, we want to type in an array list called particles. Instead of initializing that single particle, we are going to initialize an array list that will have particle <laughs> objects in it. And, and this is no longer uh, relevant, but we'll, we'll come back to it in a second. So here we go. Now our program has an array list, but it's empty. There's nothing in it. There's no particles in it. So we could say, aha, let's add particles in it. Maybe we want to start with 10 particles. How would we start with 10? Well, how would we even have one? We know the add method allows us to add a particle object. So we can call add on the array list and put in any object reference, a new particle in this case, and put that in the array list. If we want to add 10, I could just say, I don't know, let's just ha have a little loop. And you can see, now there's 10 particles in the array list. So now, how do we update and display all those, array, all those particles that are in the array list. OK, so now we need to go back. We're, we need another function for that. All we know now is how to create the array list and how to add things to it. Now we need to access the elements of that array list. OK, so to access the elements of that array list, okay, we've done add. Get is going to do that for us. Get is a way of getting objects from the array list so that we can access them and call methods on them. So how do we do that? For number one is I could say, hey, a, our, no, our particle system, by the way, over here is called a. In the example we're building, it's called particles. And that's fine, because we can make up any variable names we want. a.get0. This would get the zero element out of that array list. What do I mean by zero element? Well, remember, an array is a list of elements, a regular array, which each element has an index. And if we had an, a regular array called you know, my array, we would access the first element by its index with brackets. 
brackets. We put 0 in between the brackets, and we're talking about this element right here. Well, the get function in the ArrayList does exactly the same thing as the brackets do with a regular array. So what are we doing? What does get actually? Get actually returns for us a reference to an array, uh, to, a, so to, a, to that object in that spot. Ah, OK? Right? So particle p equals a dot get 0. This gives us that first particle out of the array list. So that's kind of getting us closer. And we can go over here to this example, and we could say, all right, let's just confirm that that actually works. I'm going to say particle p equals particles dot get 0, p dot update, p dot display. And if we run this, we can see, great, there's that, there's that first particle. And I could say, hey, there were 10 in there. Let's get the fifth one, our index number 4. Hey, there's the, that one. So clearly this works. We have an array list. We can put stuff in it. We can get stuff out of it. And we can do stuff to it. But obviously, we need to do this with a loop. Right? We want to say, for every particle in the array list, update and display. For every particle in the array list, update and display. For every particle in the array list, update and display. How do we say that? Well, one of, this is a moment. If you haven't used this kind of loop before in processing, I'm going to erase all of this because this is like a thrilling moment in my life when I discovered, you know, if you ever programmed in all these other languages, you have all these for each loops which seem really convenient. You don't need to count i and index this. You can do that in processing. You actually do this with regular arrays or with an array list. This is just a nice moment to see that this kind of loop works. We want to say for every particle p colon in the array list, in this case a, Update and also display. So if you haven't seen a loop like this before, here it is. This is called an enhanced for loop. What it's doing is saying there is a list called A. It has particle objects in it. We can just, this loop says whatever's in there, access every single one and update them. And so we can put this into our program over here and we can say for every particle sorry for every particle p in the array list particles p dot update p dot display and here we go boom we see this like little mini explosion right at the beginning it's 10 of 10 particles let's see if we can make that happen again i don't know why we need to but let's see it again poof okay so we can see that this is working this is very exciting we have a list We've added 10 particles to that list, and now we know how to access all 10 and call methods on them. Update, display, update, and display, and we see them all. Now they're gone. When they're gone, we should really delete them from the list. So that's the next step. I'm going to actually stop this video right here. We're going to, the next step is going to be deleting elements from that array list. And once we have that, then we're going to have to look at, hey, we don't, what we want to do is all this gobbledygook code that's in our setup and draw. This is all actually a could be code that's in a system class. So the particle class talks about an individual object. The system class manages the list of those objects. So we're going to get to all of that. So what I would say to you is if you're following along, find that example you had with your single object moving and try to make an array list of them. Try to do things like maybe add to the array list when you click the mouse. Uh, you know, see if you can start with nothing, then add 20, then add 1. See if you can kind of add to it in a, in a, with some logic that happens over time and by some means. Okay? So um, this is the end of this video. Goodbye.